A variety of different options uh, you have is a Dell uh, technology solutions uh, for the OpenStack. Uh, so uh, our, our approach is a little bit different from others. Uh, we decided that, uh, especially for telco-based solution, that we don't want to have uh, any legacy stuff. Uh, so right from the start, we start uh, building everything on the open architecture. Uh, using the uh, modular uh, and open source based uh, platforms uh, and scaling it on demand. Uh, we concentrated uh, when we looked at uh, how the people are going to use it uh, for Telco Clouds. Uh, we decided that we concentrate on kind of four different pillars. Uh, the first one is uh, what do we need to do in order to uh, modernize uh, the telecom network uh, as we go from four to five. And there's a variety of different things, uh, but uh, you know, mostly uh, concentrating on a fee and multi-cloud and age. Uh, then transformation of the, uh, uh, of the IT uh, on top of that uh, with the cloud native application, uh, replication, protection, automation, and various other things. And then how does a telco uh, provide the service for their customers? And that is what are the services uh, and the rich environments they're building on top of that? Uh, and then concentrate on creating the solutions which allows, uh, allows uh, telco and uh, hosters to provide. And then of course, uh, final piece uh, where we don't play much of the role. Uh, but it's a required for any of the work going forward. And that is you have to uh, change uh, the knowledge of your people uh, as uh, the new skill set needed uh, to operate in the new environment, uh, the new innovation, new operating models as you go, go through the transitions. So based upon that, uh, we'll talk about a, several of the different platforms which we provide for the customers to do. So first we'll talk about the uh, uh, Linux-based platforms, uh, so we have uh, several different options, uh, but I'll talk about the uh, Red Hat-based one, where we uh, have a joint uh, solution with the Red Hat, where we uh, uh, combine uh, the best of the flexibility of the Red Hat OpenStack uh, with the best choices for the hardware components to build the whole solution in the flexible and open way. Uh, the, the goal for that is basically to continue refresh it uh, and have continuous uh, the latest uh, uh, options for the customers, but at the same time stay on the solution which has a long-term supported uh, infrastructure and uh, long-term uh, uh, long support, uh, supported uh, continuous movement forward. So right now we are uh, still on the Queen's release of the uh, Red Hat OpenStack. Uh, and that's the latest uh, long-term supported one, uh, version 13. And we moved uh, all of the components forward to the latest version of the SAF, uh, which I'll talk about in a minute. And then uh, latest gear for the servers, storage, uh, and uh, uh, networking. Okay. So uh, actually, I'll skip a couple of those. Uh, so the latest version, which we released uh, recently, uh, had a couple of uh, main things which we moved forward. Uh, obviously, we picked up the latest version of the Red Hat OpenStack. Uh, and uh, since that's not a major version, uh, it's basically concentrated on the adding a couple of the missing functionality which were not in place yet, uh, like multi attach for the storage. Uh, we moved uh, the solution to the latest version of the of the Dell servers, uh, and that's the latest generation of the Cascade Lake of the Intel. Uh, we uh, decided that uh, we would like to uh, demonstrate uh, the OVS offload uh, not on the uh, uh, the SRV OVS offload on the NICs themselves and have them fully integrated with the rest of the OpenStack. So we moved to the uh, CX-5 version of the uh, Melanox cards uh, using uh, and moved to the 100 gig networking. Uh, and then we uh, have the full integration with uh, hardware-based uh, CPU float, which uh, the Nico float, which allows us a much different performance. It's still a little bit um, immature. 
so we keep it as a tech preview. Uh, for example, we still require very strange behavior uh, that in order to uh, offload to work properly, we require uh, additional uh, uh, DNS service, uh, which have to go through the Mellanox cards. So we have to have a Mellanox cards on the controller node, not just on a compute node. So we kind of go through all of those pain to make sure the solution operates before we, uh, we provide for the customers. Uh, we move to the Red Hat Satellite 6.5, uh, basically to, to allow a simpler version of have a repeatable process so you can deploy exactly what have been validated uh, by us. Uh, so instead of trying to have a locked bits of some other variety. Um, we move to a couple of different uh, version of the uh, Adults, uh, uh, the server components uh, for the RAID disk, so we can bypass the RAID altogether and have a better performance for that. And then we move to the Blue Store, uh, which is the latest generation of the SEF, to allow uh, to bypass the operating system and go directly to the blocks. Uh, as I mentioned, we have a freedom of doing a variety of different uh, type of the solution. So the same solution uh, we have uh, for the HCI, where we have both SAF uh, and a compute on the same nodes. Uh, we actually have a slightly different choices of the hardware for that to have a better optimization. Uh, so that's part of that solution. Uh, and uh, we also uh, released the first version of the H solution following the same model. Uh, it's a little bit different from uh, the uh, the classical one. So we have the control plane, which goes into the uh, control plane on the on the core, and only have uh, uh, compute nodes on the satellite. Again, you can't really scale it too far because uh, you know the distances will not allow that. And for each of the distributed sites, you have to have availability zones. So there is some restriction of how many nodes you can have an availability zone. And also restriction how many compute uh, how many computes you can have in distributed zone, uh, but uh, the main thing is that we go through L3 routing for multiple different networks uh, on the same physical infrastructure, uh, and we use the same ironic to uh, uh, configure and manage the underlying hardware for the compute nodes. Um, a little bit of the networking part, uh, as I said, we have to, uh, all of the different network, provision network, management network, tenant networks, uh, all go through the L3 level. Within the same site, they communicate directly, but when you go uh, between, uh, between the sites or between the sites and the core, you have to go through, uh, through the core networks. Okay. Um, as I mentioned, all of our solution based upon the Ironic to manage the underlying hardware. Um, and uh, this is a very active project uh, of ours, and we have been running it for quite some time. On the right-hand side uh, is uh, some of the gear which we are continuously running as our third-party CI uh, for the upstream Ironic project. So um, not surprising, we run it for a variety of different hardware at the same time. And what is more interesting for us is that we are running it on multiple different drivers at the same time. Uh, so every patch has been uh, tested for the iDrug driver, IPMI driver, and our own uh, and Redfish driver. So all three of them are running at the same time, and we actually test them on different boot modes, uh, both BIOS, uh, the legacy mode, uh, as well as the UFI mode. That allows us to catch all of the problems uh, earlier on and won't get anything through the system. Uh, we are uh, doing a lot of the uh, work right now. We actually uh, decided uh, early on that we would like to, over a long time, transition to the Redfish uh, APIs going forward. And uh, in the trend release, we landed uh, what we call the hybrid driver, which allows uh, the functionality which can be uh, used by the Redfish to be done used by the Redfish. Uh, uh, and of course, we uh, you know we test all of the latest generation of the Dell uh, hardware, uh, and you know continuously doing all of the um, all of the validation uh, of all of the bugs. Um, one other thing to mention that we are the first vendor uh, who have the uh, Red Hat Bare Metal certification, uh, which basically uh, ensuring that uh, Red Hat will be able to provide the full support for that. 
Um, we'll have a lot more information on our booth, so feel free to stop by. We'll give you more information uh, on what are being planned and what are we working on. As I mentioned, we have a variety of different options. So not only you, uh, we have the Red Hat-based option, and as I mentioned before, we have a Canonical and SUSE one, but uh, we have the VMware one. So VMware is a little bit more interesting, uh, and the reason for that is that Wire, which is a VMware uh, integrated OpenStack, uh, is run as a VMs on the uh, VMware gear itself, and this allows much simpler model of managing it because you're managing the VMs and the rest of them, uh, the rest of the underlying infrastructure is running on the vSphere and that is very well understood and a lot of the, Dell, uh, a lot of the IT organization already uh, have that and it has a full integration with the analytics and storage and everything else. Um, so just, uh, as I'm, you know, we are continuously, uh, as, as all of our solution, we continuously upgrade with the latest and greatest and release them on a periodic basis. Uh, so the VMware Cloud uh, is now in version 5.1, and we pick up the latest version of the, uh, of the Dell servers, uh, you know, Cascade Lakes. Uh, and we have a couple of variations here, uh, depending upon how you wanted to use it. Uh, we can have either three pod uh, uh, system with minimum of the 12 nodes and scaling up to multiple racks, or the eight one where you have two pod system. So the real question is, do you want to have an H pod as a part of your solution or, or not? But the same infrastructure and the same tooling is the same, and the same analytical tools uh, for uh, managing your application is also included. So skip most of that stuff. This is basically how we design each of the cluster. And of course, the fundamental piece that we are uh, uh, utilizing NSXT for the control plane and overlaying it uh, on, the physical, on the physical network. So we are uh, utilizing the software-defined uh, networking, uh, which is part of the VMware uh, fundamental things. And we can uh, transition it uh, both on the leaf and spine and scale it across multiple different sites. Um, storage um, for the OpenStack, uh, obviously for VMware we're using vSAN uh, as the easiest way to integrate things. Uh, for the uh, Red Hat, we're using the latest version of the Ceph and we have multiple different Ceph architectures, uh, depending upon if you want to do for the object storage or for balanced block or for optimized block storage for the latest performance. Uh, again, just like with other solution, on a regular basis when we have a new version of the software to take advantage of or new generation of hardware to take advantage of, we decide it's worse for us to do a uh, refreshment of the solution. Uh, and this is uh, the refreshment of solution we have done when we move to the blue store of the Ceph and at the same time we move to the latest generation of the hardware on the Dell servers. We have all of the performance uh, gener uh, f uh, performance uh, information for that, and all of those different configurations are transitioning into our OpenStack integrated solution. Uh, we continuously maintain uh, and improve uh, all of the different options for uh, Dell AMC storage for our OpenStack. Uh, and um, here is the latest generation of each one of those uh, and the capabilities which we are able to uh, land within the train release. Uh, all of them are certified with various different uh, distributions um, and uh, all of them supporting uh, both Manila and Cinder. Uh, and um, you know, in the kind of fundamental thing which we are doing lately, we are moving to the multi-attach uh, support on on, uh, on all of the solutions, and also we are moving to add uh, multi-pathing support, which is not formally part of the open stack, uh, but required in order to really get a better performance and uh, a high higher availability. Uh, you also have the container-based solution. Uh, this is a little bit uh, outside of the open stack, but it's related to our family of the solution, uh, which we are doing with Red Hat. Uh, so this is a version of the OpenShift, uh, actually a slightly dated version, 3.11. We are working on the next one, on the 4X. Uh, but that's uh, still a little bit immature, so, uh, and not being released yet. 
so we are, uh, this is the latest version which is available. Uh, the fundamental thing here is that while we have multiple different solutions for the virtual environment, where we can have the containers running uh, uh, either with VMware on VMware uh, uh, platform, or on top of the open stack for Red Hat. Uh, this is the one where we do the open shift on the bare metal to provide you better resiliency and better performance. Uh, so let me stop at this point. Uh, we have all sorts of information in our booth, so please stop by. We'll be happy to talk to you. Uh, and depending upon what kind of uh, workload and what kind of uh, 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 use cases you have in mind, we have a solution for that. Thank you.